Hi, it's Penny here and today we're going to be wrapping up all the books that I read in the month of May. So I wanted to say that I didn't read that much in May because of house buying activities. However, I did still read 16 things. Some of those things were shorter, but still that's not too bad. Uh, as usual, I am going to do this wrap up book battle style, which means I pair up all the books and I battle them against each other. Although actually I think we're going to do battles of three just because I really nicely have three fantasy books, uh, three sci-fi books, and two graphic novels. You might notice that doesn't add up to 16, but that's because some of those are series. Anyway, let's start with the fantasy. So firstly, we're going to have Shadows of Self and the Bands of Mourning by Brandon Sanderson, up against Forest Mage by Robin Hobb, up against The Witch's Heart by Genevieve Gornacek. So firstly, let's start with the Brandon Sanderson ones. So both The Shadows of Self and The Bands of Mourning are books from Mistborn Era 2. So the Mistborn trilogy initially is this amazing world where people consume metals to gain different magic abilities and they're basically trying to take down this dark ruler. Then Mistborn Era 2 is set like very far in the future from that, kind of set in more western times. The books are a lot more humorous and honestly not as high stakes and I have grown to hate pretty much all the characters except perhaps Steris. Uh, so in the series we're following Wax and Wayne. Waxillium is a lawkeeper out in the roughs but then because of a death in his family he has come back to become a lord and he's getting involved in different crimes that are going on. It does build up or it is building up to kind of a bigger plot to do with uh, things happening in the world or discoveries about the magic of the world and it's so frustrating to me because I do think that the things we're learning about the magic and about what's happened in the world those things are really interesting but for me because I don't like the humor of the books or the way that the characters are being developed it kind of ruins my enjoyment of those bigger things like there's some reveals in this book especially where I was shocked but because the very next thing was some character doing some idiotic comedy thing, I immediately moved on from my shock and just went back to being annoyed by the story. And I think this is not an unpopular opinion. A lot of people don't vibe with the way that Miss Bond Era 2 is written. I do think if you like Brandon Sanderson's lighter, more humorous works, then you probably would still enjoy this. I do think especially uh, the storyline in Shadows of Self had a lot of potential and some of the themes that are being explored in this one around like feeling like an outsider are interesting themes. There's also kind of an attempt to address feminism through this other character, Maresi, who's this young woman who wants to be a constable, and that I felt was done very poorly. Like it was always tacked onto the side of life and death situations where it felt like a distraction. Miss Vaughn Era 2 has just been a massive disappointment for me. I do still have the fourth and final book in that series to read. I am glad to be taking a little bit of a break with reading some other Cosmo works before I get to that. I have heard that it's slightly better but I'm afraid that my dislike of the characters means I'm just not gonna be able to be talked around. Then we have Forest Mage by Robin Hobb. So this is the second book in her Soldier Sun trilogy, uh, which is a trilogy separate from her main uh, Realm of the Elderling series, which is the series most people read of Robin Hobb and really love. And I had seen that this has a much lower average rating on Goodreads and I generally had heard it's not as good. I have to say though, I think if you like primarily the Fitz books, in the realm of the elderlings but this is very similar there are perhaps some themes that don't hit quite as well although i'm still waiting to see how the third book will deal with those themes before i pass too much judgment on it the main thing i think people need to know going into this one is that there is a lot of fat phobia that's not the theme i'm talking about that i don't think was done well i think it's done in a way that will be very triggering for some people so it's something to be aware of but i also think it's a really realistic look at how awful it can be the way that people judge you and treat you if you're overweight and a lot of the assumptions that people will make in that situation. So 
In this series, we're following this young man named Navarre. Uh, he has always dreamed of being the perfect soldier son because in this world, uh, second sons are always soldiers and he's the second son of a second son. So he expects to be an officer and do great things for his king and country and also marry a perfect wife and just have this little dream life he's always imagined. However, that does not go to plan because this is also set in kind of a colonial America type situation where Navarre is from these colonists that have come in and basically taken over from these two different native peoples, one that is more like the Native Americans and the others maybe still kind of similar, I'm not sure, but it's those second ones that have this uh, magical ability that Navarre gets very involved in. Uh, it's very kind of dreamlike and attached to both the afterlife and the environment and there's a lot about what happens to people when they die. Uh, I guess I should also say in this there is trigger warnings for plagues or pandemics. Uh, also the first book really focused on his schooling as a soldier. This book was more about him attempting to become a soldier despite some of the horrible things that have happened to him. This one especially every time you start thinking Navarre is going to get his life back together something awful will happen. I mean if you think Robin Hobb does awful things to Fitz from the realm of the Elderlings this is maybe worse? I don't know. I need to reread or Fitz books, but Navarre is really going through it. He doesn't always make the best decisions, which again is similar to Fitz from the realm of the Elderlings. But in the third book, I'm really hoping that he will actually somehow get his life together. I don't know. Maybe I'm too hopeful there. But this was just so emotionally engaging. I think it's the the part where it's dealing with these native peoples that I'll be most interested to see what it does with that in the third book because so far it's been okay but I feel like there's a lot left unexplored and that if you're going to have people that are so obviously paralleling uh, real life races that you need to do that in a bit more depth than this has done so far although it has definitely explored some elements of that in an interesting way. Anyway, I guess the summary is so emotionally engaged in this and I, I love it even though it made me feel awful a lot of the time. Then lastly for this battle we have The Witch's Heart. This is a retelling of Norse mythology so we're following Ingraborda. Never sure if I'm saying that right. Uh, she is the wife of Loki. I think in actual mythology there's really just like a tiny mention of Angraborda being the wife of Loki and having given birth to these monsters. So they call her the mother of monsters. But I do think in this retelling the author has also kind of linked in some other myths where the main character maybe had a different name but just tried to claim that they could be the same person. This is sometimes the hard thing if you're reading retellings of mythology that you're not particularly familiar with because it can be hard to know which is the stuff that the author has just created versus what is the stuff that's from the original mythology. I say it's a problem. I think if I had more time to go away and do the research I wouldn't mind it so much but I don't have the time at the moment. Anyway I guess the summary of this is that I have decided that the retellings I prefer are ones where there is a more full fantasy world and I feel a lot more emotionally engaged. Perhaps if it was more like the Soldier Sun trilogy, um, actually I think the best example I could think of was Daughter of the Forest by Juliette Marillier. And just these more straight mythological retellings where it doesn't develop the world too much and the characters, like they are developed in The Witch's Heart, they feel like real people, mm, do they? Maybe not entirely. I still definitely felt like I was being told a mythological retelling rather than a fantasy story and what I really want is a retelling that feels like a fully fleshed out fantasy. So I don't think that The Witch's Heart was bad. I actually think it's a really good retelling and a really interesting story about the struggles that Angra Border went through dealing with Loki and dealing with having these children that are definitely not what she expected. And I think it was really well written and the, the audiobook was actually pretty good as well. However, I just think it wasn't actually what I wanted. And I think in the future I just have to be really careful about picking up mythological retellings. However, if you are interested in Norse mythology and you like mythological retellings, like for example Circe would probably be something I would compare it to. Like if you liked that I would still recommend The Witch's Heart, but it just wasn't really for me. So 
if I'm putting these three books up against each other. I think it's obvious that I'm going to pick Forest Mage by Robin Hogg. I just am so invested in what's happening to Navarre. So frustrated with him at times, but also so invested and I cannot wait to continue this series. I just love Robin Hobbs writing and the way she like slowly builds everything and makes you feel like you're really following along with these characters lives. I just love it. Okay then let's move on to the science fiction battle. We're gonna have the first half of the Murderbot series by Martha Wells up against The Law of Becoming by Kate Elliott up against Clean Sweep by Alona Andrews. So firstly let's talk about Murderbot. At the very end of May and actually leaking into the first half of June but we're we're going to ignore that. I read the first four novellas in the Murderbot series as well as two short stories, Home and Compulsory, and as expected I love Murderbot. There are definitely some action parts in this series that I sometimes find are a little bit hard to follow and also feel like they don't really matter. But maybe because they don't really matter, it doesn't matter if you don't follow them because these stories are really just more about Murderbot as a character. So if you haven't heard about the Murderbot series, Murderbot is a security bot who has some organic components like some human parts but it's mostly bot and they have hacked their governor module so that now they can just spend a lot of time watching TV shows and listening to music like basically all they want to do is watch TV shows and they're a little bit annoyed when they get called out to do their security job which they don't really care about or do they because I I kind of felt like from the first half of the series you get the idea that Murderbot does actually enjoy protecting humans that they care about. Although there is also a question kind of being asked like do they enjoy that or is it just built into them? And because Murderbot has hacked their governor module they now kind of have a lot more freedom of thought and action and there's also another big question kind of being asked that Murderbot is constantly asking themselves like what do they want to do now that they can make decisions about what they want to do and I think it's just so great that everything that Murderbot is wondering even though it's framed in this like bot way of thinking it's still very relatable to the human experience and even just wanting to stay in their room and watch TV very relatable, uh, hating having conversations with humans and having to interact with humans, like especially hating to have to make eye contact, it's all so relatable and when Murderbot is narrating the conversations or the situations they're in, the commentary they add, like the sarcastic commentary and just some of the lines are just so perfect. They just so perfectly encompass life and kind of the stupidity of it all. Anyway, I was expecting to love Murderbot and I did. I will say some of the parts where Murderbot was interacting with humans were less my favorites and again some of the action parts were less my favorite. I especially like Murderbot when they're interacting with other bots and I guess also just when they're thinking oh shit this situation is fucked. Anyway, a lot of people have said that Murderbot is great. I knew it was going to be and if you haven't picked Murderbot up yet I would definitely recommend it. And this is another series where I'm just super excited to be able to continue hopefully soon. Then we have The Law of Becoming by Kate Elliott. So this is the fourth book in the Jaren series which I always think is such a hard series to talk about. The first book was kind of more of a sci-fi romance. We have this situation where humans have gone out into space and discovered that there is already this existing empire of aliens and when the humans try to rebel Weirdly, because this alien culture is so different, the leader of the human rebellion gets put into this position of power. But primarily the books are following, or at least the first book is following this leader's younger sister. She ends up on this planet where they don't know anything about space or anything. They're kind of uh, mainly nomadic tribes. Uh, she ends up staying with this nomadic tribe and kind of eventually having this romance with this tribesman leader who's trying to take over all the different tribes. But there's also a bit of conspiracy going on the planet with these aliens trying to do something. So the first book as I said is more of a bit of a romance 
sci-fi romance. Uh, Kate Elliott does really like looking at the cultural differences. So we get the modern human culture contrasted with these nomadic tribes, contrasted with this alien culture, and that continues through the series. The series definitely gets uh, a lot more political and a lot more into some strange technology stuff. I guess it's kind of playing with reality and I don't know there's some really interesting ideas introduced throughout the last book which is what I read in May but I just feel like they were introduced and explored to some degree but there was so much more that could have been done with these ideas and it's so frustrating that this is the last book because the ending didn't feel like an ending to me even though I can see why she ended it where she did but I'm still frustrated that we didn't get more of some of these ideas that were introduced. Then we have Clean Sweep by Alona Andrews. So Alona Andrews is one of my favorite authors. I really liked the Kate Daniels series and also the Hidden Legacy series by them and I've been anticipating for a while getting into the Innkeeper Chronicles for which Clean Sweep is the first book in the series. So this is kind of a sci-fi fantasy where we have these intergalactic travelers that are kind of like different paranormal creatures and when they come to Earth they stay at these specialized inns who are kind of responsible for both protecting these space creatures from humanity but also for keeping these space creatures a secret from humanity. I do really love the way that they have taken these classic supernatural creatures like werewolves and vampires and given them this like sci-fi kind of explanation. I think that's something that Alona Andrews does so well in all their series is just taking classic tropes but giving them a more logical explanation given the world so I really love their world building as well and as well I actually really liked the humor which I feel like I need to contrast this to Mistborn Era 2 because in that it's the humor that is really putting me off but the way that humor is done in the Innkeeper Chronicles I just feel like it meshes so much better with the plot and the themes of the story whereas in Mistborn Era 2 I always feel like the humor is a distraction and, and that it also like hinders the character development whereas in the Innkeeper Chronicles or in Clean Sweep I just felt like the humor was a part of who these characters were and it, it kind of made them feel like more likable characters whereas again in Mistborn Era 2 the humor actually made me dislike the characters more. So in Clean Sweep we're following this young woman named Dina and she is an innkeeper although she's a very inexperienced one because she kind of took over an inn after her parents who were innkeepers uh, went missing and she is attempting or hoping to find some information that might help her track down what's happened to her parents which I guess will be kind of the more long-running story throughout the series but in this particular first book basically there is some kind of creature that is attacking the neighborhood pets I will say trigger warnings for like graphic descriptions of animal deaths or particularly pet dog deaths but I don't think that was done in a gratuitous way because I think Alona Andrews still has a lot of respect for animals anyway something to be aware of but Dina decides to try and track down the creature that's doing that as part of doing this she ends up working with a local werewolf and there's also a vampire that comes to stay at her inn and in some ways I felt like it was setting up a bit of a love triangle although I feel like it's pretty clear which one is in game but maybe I'll be wrong maybe I'll be wrong anyway I just had a lot of fun with Clean Sweep my only criticism is that the first book was quite short but I can see that the books in the series get longer and longer and so again I'm looking forward to continuing the series I knew I would love this one I love everything by Alona Andrews so if we are putting these three books up against each other it's not as obvious firstly we're going to take away The Law of Becoming just because I was so frustrated about the lack of ending but then uh, Murderbot versus Clean Sweep both of these are very humorous actually which is not generally my taste but I think overall I'm probably gonna pick Murderbot just because the tone of the writing just it just felt so good to read I don't know I think it was the relatability and just like Murderbot sometimes saying things that are exactly what you would dream about saying so we're gonna put Murderbot 
through to the finals I guess it will be. But before we get into the finals let's do a quick graphic novel battle. So we're going to have It's Not a Hippopotamus by Juliet McIver and Sarah Davis up against Lightfall 1, 2 and 3 by Tim Probert. So firstly, that's not a hippopotamus. I picked this up because the other book by these creators, um, it's called The Grizzled Gris Does Not Exist. I really love that. I originally read it, there is a park that we sometimes go to that has the book set up as like a story walk. So the book is printed out on signs throughout the park and you can walk around and when you get to the end, there's like a little sculpture of a gris. The story is really great and I hadn't actually realized that they had another book. So that's not a hippopotamus. Basically we follow this same group of school children. In this case they are going to a zoo and the zookeeper I think says I have every animal and one of the kids says well do you have a hippopotamus and he's like yeah yeah of course I do and then we go around all the different animals and that's not a hippopotamus. Uh, these stories are especially fun to read out loud just because of the rhyming scheme and I think would be great to read to children. I didn't read it to children, I just read it for myself and it was fun. Um, I do think I still like The Grizzled Gris Does Not Exist better just because that's got a monster whereas this other one was just normal animals, you know? That's just me always preferring fantasy. Uh, but as well the art is really bright and fun so just a really fun little children's book. Then as well I picked up the third book from the Lightful series. This is book one and then book three had only just came out so in preparation I reread book one and book two. I will say I do, do still think that book one is my favorite although maybe I think my favorite page is in book two. I thought it was in book one but I can't find it now. Anyway the art in this series is absolutely beautiful in all three volumes. We're following uh, this young girl named B and also this strange Galdurian that she's come across as they go looking for her missing uh, pig wizard uncle although she is adopted which I think is going to play a bigger part at some point. Uh, so this is in a world where this giant bird basically came along and destroyed the sun and then the Galdurians built these like replacement lights that hang in the sky and replace the sun but now all the Galdurians are missing except for this one so he is looking for the rest of his people to see if they're actually out there somewhere. She's looking for her uncle. They end up finding actually a bit of a quest as these weird shadow birds start trying to destroy the lights. So I love book one. Book two is also pretty good. I do think book three took a little while to get going however at the end or in the second half we learn more about kind of the creation of the world and the the gods of the world and I really liked that part and I thought the art was beautiful for it and it was just very emotional so because of that part I ended up really loving it but I am wondering now how long this series is really going to be. Part of me wants it to just keep continuing because it is so beautiful and adorable. It's really got a like dark crystal never ending story labyrinth type vibes to it. So part of me wants to just continue forever so that I can have this lovely thing to read. However I also would like it to have more of a direction and not get too slow and I guess I just also want the characters to have a happy ending which they did not get in book three. Uh, so anyway if I'm putting That's Not a Hippopotamus up against Lightfall, of course Lightfall is gonna win because it's just so adorable and also like it's a three volume series where the books are fairly lengthy so of course it's got a lot more to it than a basic children's story. So that is all the books that I read in the month of May. Uh, now let's do a final battle where we will take the winners from the previous battles and decide what was the best book of the month. So we're going to have Forest Mage by Robin Hobb up against the first half of the Murderbot books by Martha Wells up against Lightfall by Tim Probert and maybe for the Lightfall ones at least let's just talk about volume three since that was what was new to me. But this is a really hard battle because I kind of loved all of these. How do I make this decision? I guess if we're just talking about Lightfall Volume 3 because that first half was a bit slow to get going and also it left me kind of like hanging on for a better ending because of that I think we're gonna take Lightfall off first but then it's so hard to compare Forest Mage and the Murderbot books. Do you know what? 
I think I'm gonna kind of cheat on the decision making process. I know that I put the first book of the Soldier Sun trilogy through as best book of the month in a previous book battle, so when it comes to like deciding my best book of the year, Soldier Sun is already in the mix. So for that reason, and that reason alone, I'm going to take off Forest Mage and we're going to put uh, the Murderbot books, the first half of the series. Should I pick a favourite Murderbot book? Maybe I should. Is that even possible? You know, I think it is possible. My favourite was actually Rogue Protocol. Is that the name of the third one? Yes, Rogue Protocol. Because the bot that we also get to meet in Rogue Protocol, Mickey, is after Murderbot, my most favourite character in that series, or at least so far. So maybe specifically we will put through Rogue Protocol, or we'll pick Rogue Protocol as the best book of the month. And at the end of the year when I do my best book of the year thing, Rogue Protocol will be the one we think about specifically. That's the plan. Uh, so let me know if you have read any of the books that I talked about in this video. I would love to chat with you about them down in the comments. Uh, and let me know what the best thing you read was in the month of May. Do subscribe if you'd like to see more of my bookish videos. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope that you are doing well, and I will see you next time.